And as a point of clarification, do the training hours count against your maximum allowed hours no. caring for your recipient? No, they don't. They don't come out of your recipient's hours, so they don't get deducted from your recipient's hours, and they do not. You will not get a violation if you've worked all your hours for your recipient and then you go overtime with the training classes. Um, you will get a violation if your total training time and IHSS worked hour hours exceed twenty four hours in a day. Um, so there, there's some there's some tricky areas where some of some of the self paced classes you get three hours of credit for them, but like a lot of people don't take the, the full three hours. Um, I, I mean, they're like, you go at your own pace and, but you get the three hours credit. If you, you know, if it takes you an hour and a half or two hours, you're still going to get the three hours. But, but if you claim 12 hours that you worked for your child and then you claim like, like 15 hours of training time, they're going to know something's up. Like they know you didn't do that. Um, so, you know, pace yourself and leave yourself time to actually do those classes. Don't schedule, don't sign up for classes at a time when you know that your child is likely to need a lot of support, um, because you do need to pay attention and participate. Um, if you do not live with your recipient, um, if you're caring for somebody that you don't live with, you cannot be on the clock for IHSS and also be taking classes at the same time. This doesn't come up as much for parents because when are we not providing care to our children? But, you know, if you're at home during the day while your child's at school, that's a really good time to sign up for classes right. um, or, you know, while they're taking a nap or something or like do do asynchronous classes while they're napping or something like that. Um, just kind of schedule them at times where you know you'll be able to participate. 